Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today we have a review from Agendio. This is a long awaited review because I have had many people ask for a review from Agendio. I'm very excited to be able to share this with you and let you know how the process was. Agendio is creating your customized planner, okay? It is the most similar it's two that I've reviewed as personal planner, but they are very different. You, on both of those sites, you can create your customized planner, but they are very different. So let's get into Agendio. Agendio, you can have a hard cover where your smaller spiral is hidden by like um, a book looking binding. But once you go over a certain number of pages, you have to have the spiral binding. I got a daily and I got a year's daily and you can also add some extra pages. So this is very thick. I honestly am surprised by how thick it was. I probably honestly, since I don't like my books to be so thick, but it's not super heavy. I will say that, but since I don't love my rings and my books to be so thick, I would probably, if I remade this daily, do just six months at a time. Um, that's just personally, that's just me because I'd rather have it smaller. But of course, that's not going to be cost efficient because, you know, it's going to be a lot cheaper to get a whole year at once. So that's, but that's just something to think about. This is a daily. So it is not a weekly. You can design a daily, a weekly. You can design customized notebooks. You can do a inserts, A5, and even bigger. I think they have seven by nine inserts too for all your binder planners, for your file effects and Franklin's and stuff like that. So they have 349 models in 17 configurations in three sizes. You also have extra page models you can add in. So I will admit it can seem overwhelming at first when you first go to their site. I would recommend just browsing it, playing around with it to learn about it. And they have a video on their homepage that I would recommend watching. It's really helpful. So watch the video and they, they have a lot of explanations on their pages of things. Click on all those and let the explanations help you. Um, because no, while I don't think you'll make a mistake in building your planner, I think you might miss stuff that you were like, oh, I could have put that in my planner if you don't watch the video and learn a little bit about it. If you just want to go in and build the planner in 10 minutes, I think you're going to miss stuff that you could have added in. So I um, started this planner in my birthday month in June because I just thought they had that recommendation on there. Like if you're starting a planner, you know, at an odd time of year, some people love to start it in their birthday month and that starts a new year over for them every year. So I thought that was fun. So this is a June 2018 to a May 2019 daily planner. You have your nameplate here. I will write off say I do not have the paperweight. I did do a pen test, I'll show you. I could not find that write off on their site after looking for like 10 minutes. So I have emailed them and if I get that information before this video goes up, I will put it right in here on the screen. Okay, so in your planner, since this is a 2018 to 2019, I have both years at a glance in here. And then I chose to add a note section in the front and you can tab your sections up to a certain amount. So I tabbed this note section, notes, and then this note section is a uh, kind of, it's tiny dot grid, but it's graph, um, grid paper. So I chose to put that, some of that in the very front of mine, because I don't always love all my notes to be in the back. So I can't remember, I think I got about 10 pages. So that's nice to have that up front. Every month you can choose your color, and that color goes on your tabs. So these are the colors I chose for every month. But then when the color goes painted on the page, I'll show you, it's actually much, much lighter than what the tab is. It's a really light um, version of that color. So like June was this aqua blue and that's what it looks like on the page. July was like a royal blue and this is what July looks like on the page. So we'll go through all that. Let's talk about the pen testing first. So I did all my major pens. I did my dark mild liner and I did a light mild liner. And let's go look over here. So I think the paper did really well. 
There is no bleed through whatsoever. There is tiny bits of ghosting and there is the dark mild liner you can for sure see. I can see the light mild liner, but none of it's bleeding through. So I definitely want to show you guys that if I had to guess the paper weight, I might guess 70 pounds, um, but I might be off. It might be more. It might be 80 pounds. So I'll have to wait till I hear back from them since I could not find that on the site. But there's my pen test. Okay, let's go into this design now. I did not want to forget to show you. You can also order bands from them and they let me pick one so that I could show it to you guys. And so if you are carrying your planner around and you need a band, they offer some really cute bands with like detailing on them. And um, anyway, that's just an option that they have to hold their planner shut. So I did not want to forget to mention that. They have many cover options and I didn't talk about that. This cover feels really durable, but it's not hard. You know, it's definitely bendable. So you don't have a hard surface to write on. Um, but they do have this really hard, well not really hard, it's not hard, but it's bendable obviously, but really protective coating to go over it. And that's what's on the front and the back of these spiral bound planners. Like I said, they also have a hard bound where a small spiral fits in it and it more looks like a bound book, but you can only go up to a certain number of pages on those. And a year's worth of daily pages is too much for those books. So if you wanted a year of dailies, that, that type of cover is not an option. Okay, but I'm sure if you have a year's worth of weeklies, I'm pretty sure they fit in that book. And I had a really hard time deciding between daily and weekly, but since I know that daily planners are the things I play around with and change the most in my planning, I wanted to get something that at different times I could actually use and show you guys in use. And so that's why I went with a daily. So let's talk about the daily configurations and what I did here. There are different places you can add in extra pages. I added in this one lined note page at the end of every week. So this is really cool. After every Sunday, I added in this one line note page so that I could have my weekly list for the next week go there before Monday starts. So like every Sunday I could make my weekly list because this is what I'm always lacking in a daily planner for my next week before Monday starts. So I love that you can add this in. They have so many different options like that where you can insert different pages, not just lined pages, at different spots in your planner. And that's why I say definitely watch their video and check all that out. Okay, so let's go to a page that's not written on and talk about my daily layout. So I went with a priority box um, I do love to have a place to list like three priority tasks for the day. And those are the three that are definitely getting done. And then there's so much more you can add, but I really kept mine really simple because this is my daily planning style. I just had two boxes so I can kind of divide it up. Like this might be my top priority to do's. This might be notes that I take throughout the day, or this might be, um, a lot of times I start making a list for the next day here. Um, what do I need to look at for the next day? If I want to use this for appointments or timed appointments, eight to seven, I can, but I can, because the numbers are so small and really off to the left margin, I can definitely just use that for another list or note taking um, type of space. So I really can see this functioning well for me as a daily. I love how the date is big up here. I mean, I designed that. There's so many different ways you can do that. I love it saying Tuesday, the 5th of June. You pick your own font too. I love how you have your month at a glance here and then they even give you the next month at a glance right here on your page so you're not flipping and going to look for that. So I made my daily page highly functional for myself. They have so many options. I cannot emphasize that enough you guys. So if you look at this and think yeah that's no that's not for me. They have hundreds of configurations and options. You can even make like this dotted line. Um, these are just things that I may barely remember. I might be remembering wrong, but you can make them like a full straight line, not dotted. You can change the color of many things on your page. You don't have to have any color on your page. It could be just black and white. There are just, 
there is just numerous, numerous changes you can tweak and make in your pages. Okay, so at the end of every week, like I said, I have a lined page because I put that in there. And then my Monday starts again. So I'm going to show you the colors. And as I change the colors for the month, this one line matches the new color of the month right here. And I love that right there. Love it. Oh, and I forgot to mention something. And I'm pretty sure that this is some kind of tweak that I did. Or maybe it's just with this certain design that I chose. On Saturday and Sunday, I do not have this dividing line to divide up my task list. It just ends up becoming one full long list on Saturday and Sunday. So like I said, I'm sure that's something I chose. Or maybe it's just with this one configuration that I chose. That's totally fine with me and I'm good with it. Um, I just didn't realize it until I got it. So the blue line here matches because I picked royal blue for July. So I think that's pretty cool. And like I said, your color that you pick, it shows you on the screen, you get to preview all this. It comes a lot lighter than whatever color um, is on the tab. It's like, you know, a light version, so it can go over your words. So for July, I picked this royal blue and it's blue. August, I picked this yellow. And see, this yellow line also matches the color of your month right here. I just love those little details. September, I picked purple. This doesn't really look purple to me, even though it is, it's their purple. So I think that's a little bit off. Just FYI, if you pick that. October, I picked orange, and it's a definite orange, but it comes out, you know, looking orangish yellow because it's just a really light hue up there. November, I picked a forest green. I like the way that looks. December, I picked a really, like a brick red. January is a blue. February, I picked a pink. And March, I picked a green. I love the way this spring green came out for March. That's one of my favorite ones. I also love how this lavender came out for April. Really pretty. May, I picked a coral. And this is the way the coral comes out. Then, okay, when your planner ends, so for my year, my daily, ended at the end of May, but they went ahead and gave me till June 1 because, you know, the double page right there. Then um, I added in all these pages. So I wanted to see what did the meeting notes pages look like. So I have two of those to show you guys. Um, meeting, purpose, and goals, participants, issues, key points, actions, and notes. I really like the design of their meeting notes. They have many, many different page add-ons like this that you can choose for what you need in your planner. So definitely check all those out. And I got another tab back here with habits. And I made monthly habit trackers. Um, yeah, I put in 12 monthly habit trackers so I could track you know, for 12 months for the year. And you have space for a lot of habits here, like at least 10 habits, maybe there's more. And then you have notes space down here too for every month. So I like that. And habits, I, I've tracked both ways. I've tracked monthly and then I've tracked weekly. I really like to see my habits a month at a glance because I don't know, it gives me a bigger scope. It, it helps me see really how that month went and how that habit was going. Um, it just, it helps me with looking at it monthly rather than weekly for habit tracking. And then I added in like the max number of more pages that I could put, I think, and I did some lined pages back here. So they tell you like the max number of pages you can have and they show you all the extras. There is just, you guys, there's a lot to go through on here. Um, I would just suggest, even if you don't want to buy a planner right now, it is fun to go on a Gendio and play around with it and see what options they have and see what you might design. So I would recommend that because it's just, for planner people, it's a lot of fun. There are just many, many weekly options, many, many daily options, and even customized notebook options. So if you're interested in a Gendio, go check them out. I will link them down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have used Agendio, I really would love to hear about it down in the comments. And let me know what you loved about your planner, it, what you didn't like about your planner, and if you would use them again. I would love to hear from someone who has actually used an Agendio for a good amount of time or for a year. All right, guys, 
Happy planning until next time. Bye-bye.